Previously on Pokemon Science and Magic, we continued our travels up to Frostbit Falls in order to explore the temple that's hidden there and grab the scroll that's located inside of it to prevent it from falling into Team Ragnarok's hands. On our way there, we explored the Ancient Grove where we encountered Hamel, the Double Seas Champion, and Professor Salix caught up with us in order to give us our very first Charged Gauntlet, or Armor Gauntlet, whichever you prefer, which allows us to Armor Charge our Pokémon. And speaking of which, you can expect to see a lot more Armor Charge Pokémon in this chapter. So, let's continue where we left off on Route 7. Alright, not long now, just need to do a bit more hiking and then we're home free. When it comes to this route, things will start to get a bit more chilly again, as you start to climb up the rocky and lush terrain. As always, it's a good spot for you to catch some Pokémon to add to your team, especially one which we haven't seen before. This Dragon Poison type is Wormis, the Drake Pokémon. Despite being native to a naturally cold environment, Wormis is able to survive here by keeping its skin moist. It dries out easily, you see, so it prefers to be near water. As such, it's a remarkably good swimmer, despite not being a water type. Due to its similar looks, Folklore had stated that this Pokémon is related to a member of the Adaptation Duo, despite technically not having anything to do with them. And that's really about it when it comes to the new Pokémon that you can find here. Luckily, there are still a bunch of other Pokémon that you could try to look for. In terms of the newbies, you can find Quiolette here for the first time, as well as Gedagoat, Woolert, Crytonium Wooloo, Woolarm, Huskout, Renestone, and Jumpider, as well as Shrewderall. And as for our Cattlecade of familiar faces, you can find Seed. Eskew, Snowrun, Krogunk, Ponyard, Doduo, Boldor, Cubchu, and Skiddo. And these aren't the only finds that you can try to discover here. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember, Professor Salix told us that we can find Berserker Pokémon, which, if we capture or beat, could give us one of their armor fragments. Granted, you can only find these Berserker Pokémon in the wild where their species would normally inhabit, and you must be a certain rank in order to find those armor-charged Pokémon, but still, they are here in case you want to try and look for them and get some armor fragments to add to our collection. So, while we have the time, let's look at some examples now. Starting with the... Uh, uh, Pingu. Supercharge. Well, it looks like it's Eskew's time to shine, with Armor Charged Eskew, a form it can only get if you give it a cube fragment. This form has caused the icicle on Eskew's face to melt, 
changing it into a ice water type. On top of all that, the mysterious energy, as well as all this armor, buffs up Eskew's defenses, well as gives it access to these giant glacier legs. Not only can Eskew use these to walk, similar to Doc Ock, but the spikes on the bottom can be used to crush the opponent into submission. And crush the opponent it will, with its move, Supercharged Glacier Face. Where, once those studs have battered and bruised the opponent, it will start up a hailstorm. And, once Eskew turns back to normal, its Ice Face ability will automatically be set up again. Should it have already been used beforehand. So, um... This probably wasn't the first Pokemon you'd think would get an armor-charged form, but I'm sure the next one will- OH GOD DAMN IT! SUPERCHARGED Well, if you manage to pick up a Rotor Fragment and give it to your Dotrio, you'll be able to access its Armor Charged form. Not only does Armor Charged Dotrio have two small jet boosters on its back, which allow it to repel itself off the ground, but its heads have been transformed into a helicopter blade, which allows it to control its flight power. This literal propeller head can also use this new ability to defend itself through a swirling shield, or can attack enemies through multiple spins. This new form also changes its typing to electric flying, gives it the motor drive ability, and gives it access to the move Supercharged Whirly Bird, where it fires off a tornado from its literal propeller head to attack enemies. So, if you're disappointed about those two getting an armor-charged form, well, I can't say I blame you, but don't worry, there'll be plenty more armor-charged Pokémon later down in the road. But for now, it looks like we've finally arrived to Frostbit Falls. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go and get that scroll! Here we are at last, the world-renowned Frostbit Falls, obviously known for its frozen waterfall, which is the longest waterfall to be frozen in this whole world, being frozen for almost two centuries. However, it looks like someone has forced their way in, quite literally. As you make your way across the frozen lake, you'll be able to see that the frozen torrent has been dented and I think you can imagine by who. However, what I bet you won't imagine is who else you'll be able to find here. Oh, damn it! <laughs> like I said, kid, you don't stand a chance. No chance at all. Not against Team Ragnarok. So why don't you be a smart little Squirtle and go back to your trainer? Not a chance. This is just a minor setback. Team Ragnarok, in violation of stealing ancient artifacts and wrecking a regional landmark, you are all under arrest and are required to turn yourselves in, or suffer the consequences. <laughs> oh, you are so funny, you know that? I literally mopped the floor with you, this icy cold floor with you, and you expect us to throw in the towel? <laughs> you must be more clueless than a slowpoke if you think you have any power over us in your position. Typical behavior from a wannabe, I would say. Wannabe? What are you talking about? Your brother, of course. Because let's face it, 
No matter how hard you try, you'll never be as good as Thor. Compared to him, you're nothing but a speck of dust in his shadow. How dare you compare me to him! I'm nothing like my brother! You pin me being weak on the fact that I'm related to him? And you say I'm not as good as him? Absolute rubbish! Thor may have the power, but he has nothing to do with being a great guild member. The only reason why he's a high-ranking member to begin with, other than his brawn, is because he's a part of a worthless newbie guild that is slap-bam in the middle of nowhere. He is worthless outside of that guild or in any other guild. In fact, if you'd ask me, being a part of those nobodies is bound to drain the potential of any new guild member desperate enough to find work. Well, I wasn't asking you, was I, rip-off? And since you're so keen on playing things rough, I think we'll play a little rough too. Exact. Oh. Hey boss, it looks like someone else came to the party. Think it's alright if they join in on the fun too? Of course! I don't mind it. Wait, hold on. Oh! <laughs> It's you! Well, here's a surprise encounter I thought would never happen again. Player? What do you think you're doing here? Get lost! This is my time to shine, not yours! Stuff it, Squirtle. You've already had your chance, and you blew it. Besides, I think I'm in the mood for a little bit of revenge now. So listen up, player. Beating me the first time was a fluke. You won't be able to stand a single chance against me now. Not when I've become much stronger than I did the last time. So come on, let's tussle! Sorry to drop in unannounced, but you're going to have to deal with me first. Sorry if I'm a little late. I got a little sidetracked with some Pokemon hunters. Ugh! Oh, Gresley! Oh, that's fantastic! First the champion and now you! At this rate, I wouldn't be surprised if the whole double C was on our backs! If that was the case, then your entire guild would have been dismantled in the blink of an eye. Now then, are you lot going to come along quietly? Or am I going to have to make you? Ah, oh, Gresley! Thank goodness! <laughs> I made sure to soften them up for you, and keep them around so you can- Do it! <sighs> Loki, is your brother here yet? I- uh, uh, What? Is your brother here yet? Yes or no? <sighs> no, he isn't. But then again, what were you expecting? I mean, he isn't really the most reliable tool in the shed. That's enough. I'll deal with you later. For now, just keep out of the way. Player, if Thor isn't here, then it's just you and me. Ugh, of all the members of the Double C that had to come to pay us a visit, why did it have to be a member of their Elite Four? I mean, you'd think their highest ranking member would be enough. What can I say? You boys have made quite the reputation for yourselves. And it appears that this little scheme that you have planned is taking a lot of priority. Now, let me repeat my previous statement. Are you going to come quietly, or am I going to make you? <laughs> the only thing that's being made, pal, is our little path to victory! Now, if you excuse us, I think we'll be making our way down that little hallway to get the scroll that we came here to fetch. Not on your life, sport. Go, Bishop! Player, go on ahead. Get inside that temple and get that scroll. I'll hold this lot off and make sure you don't get any company. Don't you worry about me. I've been out of tougher jams than this. Any one of these lowlife who dare try to get past me, 
is Sharpedo bait, so go on ahead. I'd rather not let anyone see what I'm going to do to these grunts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bunker Temple. Just like the first one, this too is a maze, but one with multiple floors, where you will progress deeper and deeper underground. While in here, we'll be able to run into a couple of Team Ragnarok grunts which managed to get in here and get lost. Not to mention, once this part of the story is completed, we'll be able to come back here and uncover a few Pokémon. So, if you choose to revisit, you'll be able to find Petrobat, Woobat, Magnemite, Hamor, Hoodwing, Ferris Wheel, Pikachu, Shelmet, Aaron, Togedemaru, Chargerbug, and the mistake I mean, Clink. <sighs> clink, clink, clink. Okay, I I'm sorry to stop the video right here, but seriously, who thought that this was a good idea? I- How are you alive? Uh, how is this pair of gears supposed to be alive? I mean, what was the thought process behind this thing? I mean, did Game Freak just bring in two pairs of gears one day, slap them together, and be like, BRILLIANT! Let's make a Pokemon out of that! Uh, should we try to make it look like a living thing? Like, make it look like it's alive? Nah, just- Paint an eye and a little dot there to call a mouth and poof, here we are. A Pokemon design that's more lazy than Clefki. Sue me. <sighs> Sorry, I went on a bit of a tangent there. Anyway, moving on. Welp. Here's our scroll, and it feels just like the last one did, so it's definitely not a fake. Let's grab it and... Wait, hold on. What's all this stuff behind it? Whoa. What is that? It looks like some sort of broken talisman. Probably must have worn down over time. Let's see what the text below it says. Uh... I... Yeah, I can't read this. It looks to be some sort of ancient text. And even then, it appears to be worn down too. Probably because of time as well. The only thing that you can really read is the stuff that it says on the top. Which... says... It is he who is the snowball. Well, what the heck's that supposed to mean? Well, this clearly might have something to do with the scrolls, and maybe even the adaptation duo. Perhaps we should tell Professor Salix to come down here once we- Hey? Swoobat? Where did he come from? Wait a minute. A Pokémon? in the presence of this scroll. You don't think... Supercharged! Hope you're prepared, because you are about to fight Armor-Charged Swoobat. This form can only be obtained should your Swoobat be holding a Sonar Fragment. In this form, its Sonar abilities have been modified, giving it a supersonic speaker at the end of its nose and on its chest, allowing it to fire powerful supersonic waves out of them. Make sure not to get too close to this thing. 
because those sonic blasts are powerful enough to shatter rock. In this state, Swoobat gains access to the Steel typing to replace its Psychic typing. Also, side note, just because these are armoured Pokémon doesn't mean that all of them will gain the Steel typing. Just thought I'd put your fears to rest. And its sound-based moves are boosted thanks to its new special ability, Punk Rock. It also gains access to the move, not mover. You idiot! Supercharged Heartbreak, where it blasts the opponent with a powerful sonic wave. It's essentially a special version of its signature move, Heart Stamp, which is also much stronger. And as you can imagine, you have to battle it. Now, this Swoobat is much slower than the original, but it has Tailwind to make up for its lost speed. It also has Uproar, Psybeam, and Echoed Voice to bombard you with. On top of all that, it can summon some additional assistance in the form of Loudred, which can blast you with Supersonic to confuse your Pokémon, and Magnemite, which can set up electric terrain and paralyze your Pokémon with a flurry of electric moves. So yeah, Nowhere near an easy fight, but I'm sure it's one that you can pull through should you put your mind to it. Whoa! What the heck are they? They look like... two more talismans. Uh, probably of Pokémon? Yeah, most likely. Do you think they're... perhaps the Adaptation Duo? Well... Whatever the answer may be, we won't know for sure until Professor Salix looks at this. So for now, let's just grab that scroll and get back up to the surface. Phew, I think I need a rest after all that. But hey, while we're on our way out of the cave, what do you say we check our rank, shall we? I mean, it has been a while since we've seen it, so who knows, maybe with everything that we've already done, we may have ranked up a bit. Always good to check if you know what I mean. And here we are with the big fat C rank, at long last. With this upgrade in our rank, not only have the challenges become a lot tougher, but we have also gained access to the ability to surf across water. So long as we have a water type Pokemon in our parties, of course. This ranking also slightly boosts the chance of encountering an armor charged Pokemon during the wild. So make sure to be careful on that note. Anyway, it looks like Grizzly is taking care of Team Ragnarok and is not too happy with Loki. What? In the name of Arceus, were you thinking? The Gresley, look, I, I can explain. Well, I, uh, I mean, look, I can. Uh, ugh. Just listen to the question. If you were thinking, you probably wouldn't have done something as stupid as this to begin with. Team Ragnarok aren't some newbie trainers, Loki. You're lucky that they didn't do anything worse to you. You could have gotten yourself into some serious trouble. Let's examine that, shall we? If it wasn't for me, holding them off, you lot might not have been able to arrive on time, and they would have gotten away with that scroll. So ironically, it's thanks to my help that this job is a success. And yet if we didn't arrive on time, you probably wouldn't even be here to scold. But I am, aren't I? And that's really what matters. When it comes to being a guild member, you're always putting yourself at risk doing dangerous jobs. That's our mission, isn't it? Putting ourselves on the front lines to assure our region is a safer place. That is my job. 
No, that's your brother's job. It isn't yours yet. You still have a lot to learn before you can even think of taking on harder jobs like this. You're not nearly on the same level as Thor. Not yet, anyway. So don't butt in where you don't belong. Oh, don't even get me started on Thor! Where is he, hmm? He was supposed to show up too, in case you've forgotten, but I don't see him anywhere. He was the one who was supposed to come here and help you get that scroll, and yet, no, he's just wandering off to willy-nilly land. Heck, if I'm being honest, I think I'm doing you a favor picking up his slack. You honestly think that he is more responsible than I am? Ha! Why do you think he refused your proposal of joining the Double C? It's because he doesn't want to take on too much responsibility. He would rather goof off in his own little world with his lovely little princess than rather take on any responsibility you throw at him. Thor may have his strengths and weaknesses, but he at least knows not to butt in when he's not needed. And as strong as he is, he knows his limitations, and he knows where his ranking lies. You, Loki, clearly don't. Be assured, I will be telling your guild about this. You'll be lucky not to be expelled after everything that's happened. Expelled for what? Assisting you in this task? Since you weren't contracted to do it, yes. The law says that a guild cannot do a job that another guild has already been assigned to, in violation of the Community Service Act, Code 1996. And, since you took part in one that has been assigned to the Double C, that only makes your scenario even worse. Ugh. Honestly, you're claiming that I'm in trouble, but what about Thor? He was supposed to show up, but he hasn't. I told you! He will be apprehended for this, so you can be assured, but let that matter concern him, not you. Stick around for a little longer. I'll be escorting you back to the Poke Pals Guild myself. Pa! Sorry you had to listen to all that, player. I just had to make sure that boy understands where he is at the moment. I just hope I wasn't too hard on him. After all, he does have the potential to be a great guild member. However, he still has a lot to learn before he can reach it. So, did you manage to get the scroll? Ah, excellent. Looks like Thor was right about you then. You have quite a lot of potential for a rookie. Speaking of Thor, I'll make sure to look into why he didn't show up to begin with. Not to mention how Team Ragnarok knew to come here to begin with. It is strange that they managed to get here before we showed up. Regardless, I believe that a reward is necessary for your efforts. So I will give you this. This metal coat should come in handy should you ever want to use it to evolve some of your Pokémon. On top of that, I've heard that you've also gained the ability to armor charge as well, is that not correct? Well, if you have, and if you're going to do hard jobs like this in the future, I think it's only beneficial to you if I give you an armor fragment that I have. Trust me, you're going to need all the strength you can muster. Especially if you plan on taking on Team Ragnarok again. Supercharged! If we ever get a Bisharp in our party, we'll be able to armor charge it, thanks to this new chest fragment. This upgrade changes Bisharp's blade arms into capsules which can open to reveal retractable blades. Not only can these new weapons be thrown, like knives, 
but they're able to spin around like a whisk in order to do extra slicing damage. This form also gives Bishop a new special ability called Piercer, which allows it to still do damage to its opponent, even if they use a protecting move like Protect. Of course, it'll only be half the damage, but to make up for it, it also allows Bishop to lower their defense and special defense by one stage. And it puts this new special ability to good use through its signature move, Supercharged Checkmate, where it extends its new blade arms and slices the opponent with one fatal slash. I hope this fragment will be of some use to you. Don't worry about me. I always make sure to keep some spares on hand. Now, is there anything else that you would like to tell me? Anything you think is important? Hmm, interesting. I think I'd better ask Professor Salix to look into this. He'll probably know about this stuff more than I do. Not to mention, this could help piece together what exactly is going on here with these scrolls, and why Team Ragnarok wants them so much. Regardless, I would say that your help is no longer needed for now. Thank you for your assistance today, player. The Double C appreciates it. We'll make sure to look you up again, should you be required elsewhere. For now though, me and Loki have some unfinished business. Sheesh, things aren't looking too good for Loki. But besides that, he did have a point. I mean, how exactly did Team Ragnarok find this place to begin with? And what exactly did all of that mean back at the temple? Well, I'm afraid all of those answers will have to come another day, as our journey through Cryoto continues.